I think week one is important just because to see how well the speed can go. Niels jumped on by Lulex. Does he have the damage condemn against the wall? Yes, he does. Niels is unstoppable. Origin is very well trained. Maybe they will fall off a bit. We don't know. But right now, I think Origin is the team to watch out for. I think having first win is pretty meaningful. Just getting the first games done is like really important for me because I'm a new player in the team. As Candy Pan is trying to reply, the magical journey will not give anyone a magical life. And Fnatic ace SK Gaming. Ah! It's just depending on time. I don't think you can judge too much from the first week. Ghostly Pepper is going to get a hook on Woolet, but it won't matter. Everyone from Gambit, they've backed out or died. It will take time. Like. I think practice is what makes teams and players good. We'll see. Time will come. You can slowly make yourself a picture of how LCS is going to be. go as well definitely ready for all the games here today and their pyra is getting uh, hooked up <laughs> to be on air in just a couple of minutes we see giants entering the building their coach lothak looking for another victory one on one in week one not a bad result at all pepinero at the back and there's the elements their opponents in the very first match of the day setting up their gear on stage as we speak i'm if you shock the port that are here to take a closer look at the summer split with the help of challenger series caster james stress o'leary as well as our very own mitch krepo vorspuls and trevor quickshot henry we are all ready to go but before we get to the standings we do want to mention that martin de fischio lunga won't be on the broadcast this week and for full context please see the official statement over on lolesports.com for us though we're going to take a look at the league after week one and take a look at the standings coming with that um, at the top of the table, Fnatic and Origen 2 and 0, a bunch of teams in the middle of the table, and at the bottom, SK Gaming and Gambit. And while stress, Origen coming straight from Challenger, absolutely wrecking it in uh, week one. Yeah, I think it's safe to say that for Origen, they are no longer a Challenger team. They have unseated so many of uh, the top players in Europe so far along the way. They uh, are sitting pretty, and what a start for Origen. First week, first MVP goes to Niels, brand new player in the European LCS, and he's absolutely stomping people in the bottom lane. Yeah, what a game on Vayne as well. Very impressive. And then another team that's at the top of the table, more expected, but maybe even doing better than we had expected. Fnatic, Crepo after MSI looking sharp. Yeah, I think they just look really steady. A little slower than usual, but calculated in their approach, and they didn't give away too much, if anything. And Reckless already meshing well with the team, and I think that's very important for them because that was one question mark they had, but so far looking good. And Huni uh, with an impressive NAR performance. Yeah, something actually didn't have in Spring Split. I think Huni's NAR last week really showed growth for him as a player and also for the team because they played around that a lot more controlled, a lot more coordinated. Yeah, definitely looking scary straight off the bat. Not looking as scary. Gamut and SK Gaming at the bottom. Of course, different circumstances for both of these teams. Trevor and both saying in the video, you can't read too much off that first week. We need time to amp up. Yeah, they definitely do. You know, and I talked about the teams last night on PTL and said Gambit and SK, they've changed their 80 carries, but what a difference it makes to their respective teams. With Candy Panda last year, SK were a very mid to late game team. They were smart, they were rotation based. They really struggled early. And I think a little bit of those problems still shone through last week. For SK, they, they looked much better against Fnatic than they did against the Wolves on day one. So I'd like to see how much they can develop in the, the weeks to follow and whether or not that old style of SK will still work in this new year and this new meta. We'll see after some practice indeed. When it comes to the meta, we did see some very clear trends. Crepo, walk us through those. Yeah, we did see that some of these champion picks were becoming quite predictable and prevalent and we, we decided to track that a bit. So the in initial graphic right here, you see a lot of information on your screen, but what, you, what I want you to focus on is the top picks and bans in this split. So this is the sum of the picks and bans and Gragas and Maokai, 
were picked or banned together with Kalista every single game. LeBlanc and Alistair almost the same. Maybe one game uh, they weren't picked. Same for Rexai and Urgot. So very, very prevalent picks. And it makes these picks and bans pretty predictable, especially on the ban side. A lot of these champions, or some of these champions rather, were banned a lot. And that's Urgot, LeBlanc, and Rexai banned in 60% of the games. Six out of 10 games. I did the math. But the interesting <laughs> trend right here is that Copenhagen Wolves banned Rexai and LeBlanc twice in both. So basically in both their games and LeBlanc First, one on blue side, one on purple side. So that will be interesting to see how that develops today. Now, the reason we actually started looking at these stats, and that's the next graphic, is Alistar. Alistar was the most prevalent support champion, and just so interesting to see how well he was doing, not only in Europe, also over in NA. And in Europe, he has a 5-1 five in, five in win-loss ratio. That's 83% win rate. That's, that's absolutely insane, especially with a, a KDA of 6.9 as a support. Really strong champion, and I would be surprised if he would even make it past the ban stage, he should be a perma ban right now. And then Morgana kind of surprised me. 4-0. Kind of had fallen off on the support here. But with the opportunity to flex it into that earlier LeBlanc that we mentioned, makes it a very valuable pick and seems to be working. 4-0 four and, four and for Morgana. Yeah, it definitely worked out. Peck is Morgana surprised me because it showed Origin at a different pick ban priority. Today we're on 5.10, so some small changes yeah, that's to true. the champion pool. I want to see whether or not EU picks up the varus Vein combos because we've seen some Varus before. We've seen some Vein play from Niels last week and it seems to be a little more popular in the East. And I just want to see whether or not some of that playstyle gets transfused to our local teams. Yeah, definitely love to see that combo come out. And we'll see what the teams decide to go with. And let's take a look at the matchups for today. Our very first game is Elements versus Giants. And we're going to end the day with UOL versus Copenhagen. We'll stress, what are you keeping an eye on? I think for me, it's our game of the week. Game three for the day, it's H2K versus Gambit. That's going to be a really good game because we don't really know where Gambit are right now. They're 0-2, H2K 1-1. One one. Only one win between those two teams. And you'd expect a lot more from them coming into the summer split. Yeah, we'll see how they do with a week of practice under their belt. Now, the split has only just begun, but we have announced the locations for the LCS Summer Finals. We're going to be taking a road trip to the Hovet Arena in Stockholm to crown our European Summer Champion. I love me a road trip and definitely to Stockholm. Well, the tickets will be available later this month. And for more information and all the updates you'll need, be sure to check out lolesports.com. Now, with the summer playoffs in mind, we do want to hear from you guys. So get on Twitter and tell us which role do you think will be the most impactful in the LCS summer split and why? Well, I've, I've got an opinion and I think <laughs> the role is the AD carry role and I think I'm looking at EU a little more than uh, NA in this regard because of the ADC shuffle that we've seen, a number of teams getting some old new faces, new old faces as it were and I want to see what sort of impact they're going to have throughout the coming weeks because there's so much importance on top and junglers and, and mid and ADC feels a little underplayed, but I think good players are going to rise above. I disagree there, Trevor. To make a, a true good AD carry shine, you need a, a support. You need a solid, good support. You need the young, hungry players. Now that all these washed up old players are out, found themselves different jobs, you know, ended up some certain desk somewhere, there's room for potential to grow, and I think support will be the role to watch. All right, from washed up player to washed up commentator. No. Oh! Brand, brand new and so happy to have you. But you guys, as always, make sure you send your responses at LL Esports. So use that hashtag LCS, and we're going to talk over your thoughts here on the desk later today. For now, though, it is time for some action and diving into our first match of the day in the week between Elements and Giants Gaming. They're both coming off a one and one opening week. Let's start by taking a look at the lineup for Elements there on the blue side. J Wow, Dexter, Frog, and Tabs, Promise Q, and their coach, Nif. Now, one and one on the first week, a win versus Gambit, a loss versus the Unicorns of Love, and, well, doing a bit slower in the early game in the first 15 minutes of the game in combined to the two games, only one kill, which is kind of, even though it's mostly different members, the Alliance slash Elements of Old crowd. And I think this is going to make Nif very happy. Back in, uh, in Spring Split, when we were scrimming with Nif as our coach, he kept insisting that we would stop fighting so much every damn game. It became a bloodbath and there was no objective focus. So I think he took it a, l a little bit too far. I think Elements is playing far too passive. They could have gotten punished very hard in their game against Gambit if Diamond Prox chose to actually counter jungle Dexter. But they got away with it and it worked for them in a very big stompy game in the late game. But I think their, their tendency to be slow will come back to bite them. I, I think so too. And you know, the proof is in the pudding. You look at Elements from the last split, you look at, you know, uh, uh, Alliance, as it were, uh, pri previously. And the slower playstyle with these scaling comps simply got outplayed. One of the first things that we hit on at the beginning of the summer split was how effective teams that look for kills correlated to your placement on the standings. And Elements is not one of those teams. So I would like to see them going to the Bloodbath scrim style. 
If, however, their opponents let them scale, then of course that's a different story. But yeah, you know, in the past it hasn't worked. So will it continue to show the same results later on? We'll see if an adaptation comes in and they're up against the Giants on the red side for this one with Whirlip, Frederick, Pepinero, Audrey, their new support, Godfred, and Lothark. When we talk about, um, well, active early games, the Giants last week, super active early game. Pre-15 minutes, they took four towers and their opponents only took one. They took two dragons, their opponents only took one, but they did tend to die a lot in the process. Yeah, that's the biggest problem here for the Giants is that with all of the towers, all of the dragons, they gave away nine kills in the early game before for 15 minutes and only picked up five kills in four. return. Uh, if, yeah, for five, uh, yeah. The, uh, the Somewhere around that mark. Yeah. <laughs> I, I believe it was five, but uh, they only picked up a, a handful of kills, gave away a lot to the enemies. And a, a team like Giants giving up that, if they do that game after game, they'll look to struggle as they continue through the yeah. season. I'm, I'm hoping the same style works though, because I think that's Giants' way to beat elements today. If they use that aggressive play style, but make slightly less mistakes, they can build up a lead and beat Elements because if it goes to mid to late, I think Elements is the stronger team. At the same time, I think Elements will have learned from their mistakes, or not necessarily mistakes, but from their weak spots. It was pretty obvious in, in regard seeing how passive they were. I hope they uh, kind of fix this, especially coming preparing for a team like Giants when mm -hmm. you know they're going to come out swinging and you know you probably have the edge on them later on in the in the mid to late game because they yet again became a very four-man defending Pepe Nero type of team and I really want to want to see them break that mold. Yeah, we'll see what they decide to go with. It's time to check in at the caster desk and as we'll go, we'll hear from 80 carries from across the LCS on the return of the Queen of the Freljord in competitive play. Uh, the new Ash is very interesting. Uh, for me it feels great because Ash was like my first champion I ever played in the game. Oh, actually, I have a history of being like the worst Ash player who's ever lived. <laughs> She's the first champion that you play when you first start the game, but I was always crap at her. Actually, my first summer I played ever in League was Ash. Ash is crazy because she has amazing single target damage with Q, and she has amazing AoE damage with W. Even if the rework is not that big, I still think like she got incredibly buffed because of her whole passive Q, W interaction sort of thing. She's a really strong initiator. Uh, it's really easy to find picks with her. And she's really strong laning phase right now. Like you can spam that W and she's got really high damage output with her bursts. I feel like Ash is just like borderline OP in a way because she just works in every situation. She's like the full package AD champion right now and her only weakness is that she's really weak to flanks. She's kind of vulnerable against certain comps, but if you have Morgana, for example, Morgana Ash, you can peel pretty easily with it. Uh, it just feels like you play Ash in a different way now. Before it was, you have to manage your mana because you have to be able to toggle your Q so you can get the slow stuff, but that, you already have that now, but that doesn't even cost mana anymore. So you have perma slow, and then you get this five five stack thing going on, uh, and once you get this hail of arrows thing, like you just do so much damage. She's just strong overall right now. I think the new Ashley is actually a really good pick. It's, it's really fun. Well, maybe we'll get to see some more Ash today. Hello, everyone. I'm Devin Pirate, Technics Young, and of course, manning the desk with me is Mitch Carapo, Force Pulse, the man. So nice. We're going to give him an introduction twice, and we're about to get into Champ Select between Elements and Giants Gaming. Carapo, what are you looking for here today? A lot of bans and picks, Pyra. I so I want to see if Alistair is finally banned where he belongs currently because he's quite the strong support. Absolutely. Well, we saw that Morgana as well. I mean, there's a lot of really hotly contested stuff in the pick band so far today. And I think even though it's a new patch, even though it's a different day, not that much has changed there. I expect to see probably a lot of the same. What, what do you think about that? Any, any any surprises that you're thinking about? Yeah, just like Wicho said, we are on 5.10 right now. Gragas received a slight nerf, but I don't think it'll be enough to knock him off his tier 1 jungle position at all. And I'll be keeping my eyes on the supports because, I, if I'm correct, both are new to the LCS. Absolutely.